in the planning and the chamber doesn't seem interested. So what is it going to be that actually oversees trying to save the historic I beg you to get this on the agenda. Ron McLeod is happy to share what worked in the first 20 years when the historic district was created, but somebody has to take the next step, I would say sooner rather than later, if we are going to uh, reinvigorate the downtown and save the historic buildings. The second item is Jimmy Rogers sort of tackled me outside the pizza parlor as I was coming here tonight and said, hey, Peter, what is that? the citizen of the year and the alexander dunsmuir award uh those awards have not been given since 2019 and Jeannie said you made a donation of 900 dollars i have the 900 dollars for the last year or so it's so for those of you that are involved in the chamber, um, if you're a prior award winner, as I was, uh, you're on the committee forever, but the committee, only three people came, and the committee has lost its vitality. I think it would really be good the city to start this fall, typically at the uh, community center, to recognize uh, outstanding members of our community to recognize the businesses of the year to recognize young people and get this back on track um, i'm happy to give my donation over to whoever's going to put it on but uh COVID is done we're rebuilding our community thank you thank you are there any other comments and raise your hand and you also may have three minutes to communicate on an item that is not on the agenda right seeing none we're going to close our general public comment Over to Sergeant Ortiz. And actually, Dave, either could one of you grab everybody on Zoom? Just so everybody can hear you. The city of Delaware contracts for the 5, 80 hours of patrol time for the 2023 2024 year. Hours have been completed. Eight percent of the fiscal year. For the month of month of July, I received four hundred ninety-five hours in the office. Now we have two hundred and eighteen calls for service. Uh, this is last year, one hundred ninety-three. We did four cases in July. We had fourteen. Uh, eight citations. Eight citations. Uh, five of them were in reference to arrest warrants. Um, is the breakdown One auto theft. We discussed the all of the West Coast and was apprehended before. Maybe that's the Eleven disturbing the peace calls, one domestic violence incident, 
Our deputies went out with 23 subjects. They were out with 10 different vehicles. They conducted 40 11 school checks. Those will be increasing as school is beginning. Acts of trespassing, 15 traffic stops, three vandalism calls, and we conducted seven. There were no notable crimes uh, for the month of July. Uh, I'm told there was one small incident that they handled. No um, DUIs. That, that group, that's, I'm really proud of the way they organize that. They do a really good job of providing uh, sober options. Sober options. Safety. I, I'm in communication with the California High Patrol and let them know hey, we do have a an event with over a thousand people that are here as the star of the show. And every year we're not dealing with public intoxication, kids' fights, drink driving, crashes, no other things. Good job, Michael. Oh, you're having your job done. Two major issues. Nope. Seems like Chris Passing. Chris Passing. You know, we're going to talk to you about stuff that happens. We're going to talk to you about the yard and the house that I don't want there, but. Just have to you can you can use that after the business. Um, yeah, you, you can. Uh, yeah. Any questions for Chairman Ortiz? Seeing none. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we'll move into council member comments from staff. We have the uh, council member Heisler. Um, just to first come when I get the chance to um, take the show to the media and interact to the media. So I want to get a He put together pretty much, he had help. You know, I think it's been many rest of science put together this week. Um, Probably about a million hours on the phone. But no man did a great job. <laughs> We're all pretty proud. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have some really good news. Um, so I kind of retired from the soapbox derbies. You know, I'm getting a little bit older and after 10, 11 years, kids are getting kids up down the street. It was a little tough on the body. Um, so, and I really kind of didn't want to see it just die and go away. We've got 32 cars. We still got some ambition. So Bruce kind of mentioned, why don't you find some young guys? And um, so I approached our own Kevin and Dylan from the hardware store. David Reed to take over who I wrote the soapbox derbies. So with my help, the rotary cell, we're going to carry on the soapbox derbies, God alone, and um, um, let the people roll. Um, I'm really looking forward to being on the sidelines for once and not being an emotional wreck. But uh, I think it's going to be cool, and um, I'm kind of proud of them. So I'm looking forward to railroad days already next year. So. Cool. That's all we got. The other thing I have is if people don't realize it, there's an app out there called Lightning. <laughs> Thunder outside, you can pull up the phone and it'll show you all of them. Uh, you know, this is the fact that, uh, you know, plus was little white. And somebody on Facebook sent the picture of their lightning. Uh, we could be hit by one of those if uh, the weather turns up that way. Having so you can be tuned into what's going on. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Awesome. Um, the success this year in terms of volunteers. I know sitting at the table up here volunteered in some way in the sheriff's department for being there if we needed them. I know a couple of the deputies stopped by at the end of the night. Unfortunately, they couldn't do the walkthrough during the event, but they did make it there a little later. It's kind of like they kept getting calls out of the out of town, which at least they were out of town. Um, <laughs> uh, 
everyone who either donated or uh, came to the event as well. I don't know, I also just wanted to touch a little bit on uh, okay. saying that Lightning app is a really good app. We actually use it up at the ski park and other lightning nearby, you know, he's been sitting in a metal chair attached to a metal table to the top is suspended 30 feet up in the air. So distances and it's it's very useful. Also Watch duty lists nearby fire. <laughs> <laughs> New fires. It's it's a very very good. Act. I just want to say that. We need to encourage everyone to be very positive. Fire that is not enough in the Trinity's fundamental forest for something like what happened in Hawaii is. Continue to get lucky. Yeah. We thank uh, the mayor, city manager, and our finance director for facilitating it. I thought that was one of the where we had back and forth with the community that were there. And I look forward to it. I, I just really like the way you conducted that. And uh, thank you. Um, there is a rural technical assistance grant. <laughs> A grant writing assistance for uh, future transportation <laughs> in the city. It's super easy to put together. So I think we're going to crank that out tomorrow and hopefully get some more resources. Um, I'll bring up in the <laughs> uh, preparing the Moss Gray Fall project right now, working on. <laughs> of the Sierra Nevada Conservancy grants are opening up of the monies needed for fortunes. Um, if you haven't ever engineered a bridge, it takes a lot of effort and money. To do and what I'm working on is trying to prep that so that we can just shove it off to as many grants as possible to, to get that planning done. Uh, a document to become kind of a living document so I can send it out to everyone to fill in and then uh, thank you to everybody again for the group fest. This music festival um, was here for about a week and a half, two weeks, really well. Um, they have some really students who came here for that music festival and they just basically fall in love with them here. And then they love it. Um, so just kind of a thank you to that group as well. So uh, after that, I'll move us into committee. I've got some good news. I've been talking in the past about uh, the bus system and trying to come up with the capstone project. And, uh, she seems like she's really um, tuned into the idea. So she understands. So that's why we decided to be bringing it up at the LP. Good. That's good. So we'll move into committee reports. I'll just been working with Matt this week to talk about the results of the survey work. That was done. Uh, thank you to everybody who participated. Back on those uh, to bring forward for a draft plan. So on the date, guys. They also had a number of threats that occurred in June, so they're taking all the active transportation plan to the public for another round of picture. Um, we went over a very and satisfying uh, ranking matrix 
on all of these projects based on grants that come out and which one based on the different grants that are available, like Safe Rocks to School, ATP is another big one. They're finalizing those details and hopefully in another month or so we'll have a public to view and then planning commission and city council for review as well before they go into the final stages of that. On schedule for that ATP completed right at the beginning of the next ATP. So we're hitting that. So, um, and we'll be able to get some really good funding for uh, sidewalks, trails, everything like that. And that's my only committee. Are there other committees that met? The uh, snow removal, snow policy. Uh, 102 degrees. Yeah, I know. Well, I was 103 that day. It was really hard to talk about snow removal. On it. Um, so in attendance was myself as the committee chair and council representative. Uh, Dustin was the city manager. Uh, works director. Uh, was uh, attendance via Zoom. Uh, then Jeannie. Yeah. <laughs> Jeannie was a, in attendance from the pizza factory and Mark, um, Mark Allen and Steve here. Um, basically, the way the committee set up is one member from North here, one downtown business owner, and then the city councilor and then city staff. Uh, this was our first meeting. Chat a little bit. Our goal is to have three meetings. Um, this first one was mainly just ideas, strategies, identifying issues, potential solutions. We focused a lot on uh, parking, where it's not going to be removed, a little bit on operations, um, but mainly outreach. Uh, uh, important that was uh, new policy related to those rollouts, and also what to do in the situation. You know, what does snow removal what exactly snow removal means? Uh, what windows? What's the timeline for snow uh, Our next meeting is going to be defining those ideas and then adding any ideas that members of the public or other counselors. <laughs> Finding that down even further. The second October meeting uh, is when we're hoping to vehicles that normally park on the street on a normal day versus the amount of parking spaces. So we didn't necessarily look at the any additional parking in time of snow removal. Two cars or is leaving town and there's a snow removal. Separate those two situations because but yeah, so that was actually one of the main focuses. Any other committee reports? Approval August third, twenty twenty three, uh, for consideration. Is there any discussion? Chrysler, signed by Councilmember Brian. All those in favor of approving motion carries. Thank you. We'll move into item eight, which is our the and the MOE for counseling application in what's spelling on public It's not us verifying. We will spend a minimum on this. Verifying what the minimum what is. The, yeah. Okay. Just reading that. 
Yeah. Make a motion to adopt the consent agenda. There's a motion by Council Member Heisler, second by Council Member Deutsch. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All those in favor, uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Does that, does that set our COPS grant number? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we know the number yet or is that later on? Not until it comes in each year. It's always a little bit more. Thank you. Well, we have waste uh, enforcement and reporting in the county. You want me to take it or you want to take it? Okay, I can take it. So, Siskiyou County changes in staff around the same time as the Senate Bill 1383. If everybody remembers, that's the it's actually a methane gas. Part of that is reporting for tier one and tier two food waste producers. We do not have any in the city limits. Um, but what this memorandum of understanding does is it basically allows Siskiyou County to take over the reporting and enforcement responsibility for the city of Dunsmuir. If at any time we do have a tier one or tier two food waste producer come into the city, it also is a requirement uh, for us to comply with AB 939, AB 341, AB 1826, and AB 1383. Again, it's all about solid waste reporting to the state. Um, basically, they're just asking us to sign on to a, a MOU with the other jurisdictions in the county to just have the county do the reporting for us. They also work with the uh, waste haulers to do the reporting for them as well. Um, and so we're part of the Joint Powers Authority. Our uh, city manager is the main uh, representative on that board, and then I am the alternate. Um, we did have a meeting a couple weeks ago that I reported on, and so they're coming back through and with their new staff, uh, making sure that they have all of the necessary documents in place. It does not commit us to expend any funds to the county or reimburse them for their time, um, and so that is basically what we have before you today. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. We'll open this up for public comment. Would anyone like to comment on the MOU for edible food waste compliance with Siskiyou County? Seeing none, we'll be back into discussion. Is there any discussion? Um, there, We did pass a bunch of ordinances and I assumed it was all good. And then we heard back from general services that we also had to sign an MOU saying the same thing that our ordinance says. Uh, so oh, that is why it is here today. A little over a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I told them I would not sign on to an MOU that we could consider because that's not our policy. So that is why it is here today. I would move approve memorandum of understanding by the county of Sisney and the cities of Dunsmuir, Weed, Monchester, Wairica, Montague, Fort Bend, Ecuador, and Julie Lake for the establishment of the Edible Food Recovery Program in the city of California, Code of Regulations, Title 14, Division 7, Chapter 12. All right, there's a motion by Council Member Keisler. Seeing no other questions or discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. We will alleviate the county's case. <laughs> Yeah, we'll move into item number one. We'll just first reading ordinance 576, an ordinance of the city council of the city Dunsmuir, amending title 15, buildings and construction of the Dunsmuir Municipal Code. And we have our contract planner, uh, Richard Tinsman, available. Go ahead. Good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Fantastic. All right. Sounds like we got the audio all worked out. So, this is a basic cleanup job. So what we have is when uh, the city council adopted ordinance 575, uh, updating the zoning code, uh, I screwed up, excuse me, mea culpa. Uh, I left out deletion of uh, repealing chapter 1540. So this is coming back in to repeal chapter 1540 regarding signs, which is now all accommodated 
under chapter, uh, chapter 1780 signs, which I should note is not 1764, which is in your ordinance where it references how it's been reflected. So please note that is a clerical error. I have no idea. I was probably under caffeinated. Uh, but uh, so the next time you see that, the ordinance, there's a slight reference in the whereases to how this has been addressed in the past. That will be corrected. That's the only change we'll see next time coming around. Uh, so this is just the first reading. And um, uh, with that, uh, I uh, you know, do suggest uh, there is a recommended uh, or a suggested two motions in your staff report to get this ordinance underway. Great, thank you. realize we have to send it back and that we're starting with the first reading. What's that? Did you Rico. hear Rico, did you hear him? I I did not. Something happened and the audio has gone out again. I'm sorry, Big Dave. Can you please repeat what that? What signs? What signs? It regulates all signs in the city. So basically, it used to be that the city's sign regulations were provided for separately under Chapter 1540. Am I? Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Juliana, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, okay. so just elaborate a little bit more on that. So uh, is the entire sign was originally in chapter 15.40. There were some changes to the in this. Correct. <laughs> So now, so right now, the fact we'll have two conflicting chapters in the ordinance, and so. hearing at approximately 6.30. Reminding of the old sign code. No hands up, Madam Mayor. Okay. Right. Uh, no public to go back into discussion. It's Ma very much a clarifier. Madam Mayor, I move that on the basis of the entirety of the record before us, we make the finding that the proposed does not have a significant adverse effect on the exempt from the environmental review provisions sections 15 or sorry, one five six one B three introduce and read ordinance five seven six only. That we waive the further reading of the ordinance and that we direct staff to bring ordinance for adoption at the next regular council meeting. All right. If there's a motion, is there a second? I'll second. Great motion made by council member. Is that a single motion? So, uh, motion by council member. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify. Thank you, Rico. Move us into our other piece of new business 11G, the Cal OES uh, Jumpstart Grant JS22013 designation of applicant's agent resolution for non state agencies. All right. Yeah.
can do any of that. And then, uh, so Has an idea what it's uh, what it's for. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll open public comment on this item. If anyone likes to make public comment, they may now choose to do so. Seeing none, we'll close public comment and go into discussion. Is there any discussion or motion? There is a recommended motion on page thirty of the agenda packet. I. A motion to approve designation of application agent resolution for non state agencies and on the budget amendment. and amend. This is where my glass to amend the budget to reflect revenues and expenses accordingly. Is there a second? I second. So, a uh, motion by Council. Madam Mayor, I see a fiscal impact check. Yes. Yes. Okay, just roll call. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, there's a motion by Councilmember Keisler, second by Councilmember Clarno. Any other discussion on the item? Seeing none, we'll move into a roll call vote. Councilmember Keisler? Aye. Councilmember Deutsch? Aye. Councilmember Clarno? Aye. Councilmember Bryan? Aye. And myself as an aye. Motion for the case. Madam Mayor, for the interest. Um, I would like to go back to. Uh, maybe my fault, but when we consent to the agenda, if you look at that staff report, there is a physical impact. Physical. Physical. Do I need a roll call vote? Every, everybody was in uh, favor for the MOE. But should we do a roll call for the record? That that one is not related right. directly to expenditures. I mean, I'll let it. No. Yep. No. I. Yeah. You roll call. I come okay. Back, but. Yep. Yeah, there's no, it's all it is, it's just a verification that we did spend that money. So that was last year's money and it's already okay. been spent in the past. Just, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So. Yep. All right, so uh, we'll be moving into our closed session item, which is followed by an open session item. And so per the Brown Act code, our closed session item for tonight is a performance review of the city manager. If anyone would like to make a public comment related to the performance valuation of the city manager, they may do so at this time. They will have three minutes to address the council. And if you are on Zoom, you may raise your hand. Zoom still. Up. I think uh, yeah. Wendy's got it. Yeah, I'm trying to get the... I think you just moved it off the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still open. They can still hear us. So if anyone would like to make a public comment on the performance review of the city manager, they may do so now. All right. Seeing none, we are going to stop the recording and enter into closed session and vacate everybody else except for the council and the city. Meeting owner. Yeah. So after the meeting, I want to mention something to you. I'm surprised anyone. All right, everybody else want to live their mics? Can you hear us on Zoom? Just yep. give us a thumbs up. All right, we're good. All right, we're just everybody. Are you on the center? All right. All right, we will reconvene back into open session. During the closed session, the city council, uh, Mayor Lucchese made a motion to assign a status of satisfactory to city manager Dustin Reeves' performance. It was seconded by Councilmember Keisler. All members voted in favor of that motion. 
And so we will move on from our closed session item to our last open session of the evening, which is the amendment to the city manager uh, contract. So one of the things that was discussed with the contract at the beginning of uh, Mr. Reed's employment was not to add a COLA, which is a cost of living adjustment, because we were still within the union negotiations. Um, if we all remember, it did not go well with just us doing it. Um, and we went to just a one-year extension. And so when we were talking about negotiating that, which was the vice uh, at the time, I believe you're mayor right. and I, yeah, anyway. So at the time, uh, council member Brian and I did not feel comfortable as to not cause any friction between staff um, and the new city manager. And so now- um, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so there is a recommendation to uh, amend the contract as presented on page 43, which would grant city manager Reed two additional weeks of um, vacation pay. Two or one of them. Sorry, one, I'm sorry. sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, one week of vacation pay and to add the to the salary discussion for city manager reef to include that cola that is equal to that of the operating engineers approved MOU in the same manner and date as other employees. Is there anything else that I missed on that, Councilmember yeah, Brian? Procedural question because the way that contract is written, we had two point five percent uh, in lieu of cola and a guaranteed increase in here. And then we were hoping to go all the way to five based on performance review and uh, city budget as well. Um, so that part of this item on the minutes. So this would be in addition to the 2.5% with the option of yeah. five. When do we do that? I thought it would be a annual review. So this is part of that. Well, I, I guess that is true. We will have to put a new agenda item on the. Well, the term. We do it as part of it. Yeah, I was assuming we could do it as part of the yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah. Chair. This is a, this is a review. This is a time and the year. This is the yeah, time you kick it in. All right, I think it's one of the. We can give this break. Okay, so it so in addition to the motion to approve the amendment one to the city manager read again we haven't discussed yet or open for public comment. Um, there would be a consideration of motion to assign a um, salary increase per per contract at the full five amount. Well. I, well <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions? Comment, would anyone like to comment? Consideration of salary. In fact, I just wanted to clarify the 25% was in place of color for a number of reasons. Positions work within the union where you have your steps. So this would be a step increase, is the 2.5 and the potential to go to five with satisfactory performance. 
in addition to the COLA. Is that your understanding? Yeah. So it would be, so basically so, it's a motion to assign a salary step increase. I make a motion to assign a salary step to 5%. Okay, so there is a motion on the table to set it at 5%. Is there a second? We can discuss it after there's a second. There's two topics here. The amendment to the contract is one, what the ratio should be. I'm supportive of that and I'll second that okay. as, a, as a thing. But as far as the amendment to the contract goes, um, what are you looking at? Well, I just don't, the, the guaranteed part was supposed to play that way. Could we still keep it at one to five or, you know, sorry, up to 5% based on performance review, et cetera. And then the COLA takes care of the inflation aspect. Right, that's the 5%. So, so you're asking for a modest? I'm asking for an, well, I'm not even asking for it. I'm just trying to, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the COLA and the 5% this year. I just don't know with inflation, we may get to the point where we can't afford that years down the road with that guarantee on top of it. So I don't know if- um, And I think that's a bigger conversation outside of the, the contract because if inflation or if the COLA, for example, spikes to 15.1%, we have that in both the MOU and in this contract. And that's gonna be a bigger conversation of- uh, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're, we're hoping in the <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, but it, yeah. The 2018. <laughs> I think that's a greater um, financial no. picture. It's fine out of this way. We really okay. will have bigger problems if we have 10% inflation. In so we have a motion on the table to assign the dollar step on five. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the motion at hand. Is there any discussion on the motion at hand? No, no. All right. So I'll go into a roll call vote. Councilmember Heisler? Yes. Councilmember Deutsch? Yes. Councilmember Clarno? Yes. Councilmember Bryant? Aye. Self is an aye. So that motion carries. So that item is addressed. So we're moving back to the consideration of amendment number one to city manager Reeves' employment contract. So here's my concern on the is that it's the, going back to trying to mention the union, mm -hmm. um, and I am okay with a little bit of a discrepancy between non-union and union staff as well as not too much of a discrepancy. But please, can, if you could clarify this, is there a mechanism among the union staff members to get that one to five percent? They, increase they have a uh, step increase in some of on that small number of steps. But it is a set step. Yeah, it is a set step, and that's fire or med schedule. It's a med call. It's a med call. Med call. So, um, so there's that's written within the But it is it is written in there on how that process works, what it was like. So yeah. Like. Typically, and, and I think typically your step increase occurs at your annual review. Mm -hmm. And then the COLA usually takes effect at the beginning of the calendar year. Mm -hmm. this, sorry, this, oh, it's fiscal year here. Okay, why read it's calendar year? So yeah, you either the fiscal year or the calendar year. So typically everybody gets theoretically two raises a year, although the COLA could be decrease. Could be a decrease. Okay, so the two in rare circumstances. So right. right now we have the two percent, as I understand it, we have the two percent that can be increased to five. Yes. Or two point five. Two point five. 5. Yeah. yeah. That can be increased to five. So there is also the side of this that in those extremely high years, the decision we just made, hey, we're getting these at two point five percent. That's true. Um, yeah. the limit. You know, that increase. Yeah, it it's the budget. The way that we have it written in the contract, it's based on performance. And theoretically, our city manager is the steward of the budget. Sure. And so if we have multiple years of negative operations that 
again, some things are out of control of everybody. Sure. There is that conversation to be had, okay. theoretically. But that's fine. We're not going to go into recession. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to be great. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion or motion? Well, I think I, I had a question, but I wanted to just verify. So it, uh, the day it takes effect would be July 1st. Yeah. It says the same as MOU. The COLA would be retroactive. Yeah, but to July 1st, not January. Yes. Correct. Okay, cool. So. The only thing that we adjust on the annual is the actual, um, if we adjust it, um, is the um, increase for benefits for insurance. So that is adjusted on an annual basis. On an annual basis. Yeah. I don't know how long ago that would take out either, but. To me, that is that. Yeah. So you get that, that update before the budget comes. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve. Um, city, uh, sorry, move to the contract agreement with city manager. Did it say by title only or by? Good. Uh, second by Council Member Keisler. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll roll Councilmember Keisler, Councilmember Deutsch, Councilmember Clarno, Councilmember Bryan, myself as an I, motion carries. We move into item number 12. This is just the agenda items. We did update it with everybody's items. If you do have items, please email me. Talk to me. I don't know. I think the other thing that is coming in is He's saying he's a public working officer, has a private job, side business, and he is a leader. He sells cards that he is being possessed. I feel that this is a problem. Well, I, allegedly. I think that's an alleged thing. He's got 11 pictures of 11 cards. So, <laughs> We are not in charge of sleep. <laughs> We'll talk later. Uh, calls, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I'll take the microphones off. I can't do it. See what I said?